Listen. Spike Lee has his joints, Scorsese makes his pictures, and M. Night takes you on trips. Leave it to the director, whose name literally gets used as a verb, to continue taking twists and turns decades into his career, with the best being him following his sixth sense and completely funding and owning his recent movies. I paid for the visit, split, glass, and, and old. All, all four of those, and I paid for servant as well. That way, he's able to take the craziest risk and ideas, so, you know, whether it's a hit or you're split on it, at least there's no studio meddling and you know that what's happening on screen is 100% his vision. If you had to describe old in three words or less, what would those words be? M. Night Shyamalan. Let me explain. So the basic premise of old revolves around a family who visits a foreign resort with servants handing them cocktails left and right, only to find themselves on a beach that messes with time more than Christopher Nolan. It's a movie that can serve as a parable, which I think is its strongest aspect, but in terms of its premise, it might age faster than its title. So full spoilers from here on out. Oh no. So besides their main family and their two kids, we also see a doctor come in with his young wife, younger daughter, and his mom. Miles is no stranger to getting lost on an island, and here he plays a nurse who's on vacation with his wife who's a psychologist who also gets lost. They're feeling unsafe. There is a lot going on here. And then there's a rapper who goes by the name Midsize Sedan. I envision him in my mind as J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Nipsey Hussle. They find a lady in the water, which ends up being Mr. Sedan's friend, which puts the plot in drive when her body floats to shore, causing a little bit of a murder mystery thing to go on on the beach. He's the first to reveal a pattern of illnesses that'll connect them all when he mentions that he's got blood clotting, but the doctor's too busy blind spotting. I think this man had something to do with it. I don't like this dynamic at all. Before they can even pick up what's going on, the grandma's the next to go, and they realize... Half an hour is equivalent to something like one year of our lives. Because it's a private beach, they're super secluded and guarded by these walls made up of special rocks. They're minerals. Obviously, this ends up being a place where phones don't work. If you try to escape through the one-way canyon in, you end up getting vertigoed back out with what is described as cranial pressure, as if you're deep underwater. But here, it's like the air is bending you. It does an effective job of making you feel uneasy. And it really does give you, like, seasickness from your own seat with how woozy it was shot. Everyone is framed with more negative space than there are reviews for this thing. But I personally really like the eeriness of, at the beginning, not really seeing the kids. Like, they're blocking them out so that they're aging off screen, which is... Much much better than seeing the kids early on be on an expedition of exposition to flesh out M. Night's exhibition. You said five minutes. Technically, it's been more than five minutes. Boy, if you don't- The graphic novel that the movie's based on actually expands on a lot more physical changes, but here, Eminem makes sure to let you know that he was already dealing with a hurricane while filming, so he wasn't gonna be dealing with continuity issues. And so the nurse just straight up tells the audience that hair and nails, they're not gonna grow here. That said, I did think that the prosthetics were done pretty well. What was confusing is occasionally I'd be trying to pull one off and I'd realize that was actually me. But, you know, I'm not used to what was false and what wasn't. They end up having a Jack Shepard moment when Prisca's tumor grows exponentially and they have to cut it out, begging for one of the goriest scenes in the movie, but this also leads to the reveal of the doctor's mental condition that's deteriorating ever so slowly, which eventually leads him into manually shiving mid-size sedan. I don't like this dynamic at all. In the graphic novel, there is an abundance of overtly, overtly sexual moments, but like... It's French. The one that they do keep here is that the doctor's daughter goes from being a little girl to a little woman who gets impregnated by Trent before she's even lost any of her baby teeth. And because M. Night's not a man who sticks to the formula, they have none for the baby, and it goes straight from the womb to the tomb. Just would never have been made in the studio. So it's just, that would have been the first note. You cannot do that. Really? Yeah, you, you cannot do what you just did. It's too outrageous. You just can't, you can't do this to audiences. That causes her to try to escape only to hit rock bottom. But hey, as morbid as this whole bit was, M. Night knew better than to do it to the dog like they did in the comic. I mean, I've done things in movies that you just can't do, right? You just can't do. I kill everybody, right? This is like, uh, you, you could be a star, you could be a baby, you could be whatever. You're, you're not safe in these movies. This couple is next when Jaren tries to swim away, only to end up drowning faster than Dunn did in that puddle as his wife dies of a seizure because the doctor was too busy getting rusted. The biggest Shyamalan twist of it all, though, was this model. Her calcium deficiency ends up having her contort more than she did in Lovecraft as she ages, leaving the original family as the final survivors who have to accept their fate. They realize that their bond is unbreakable as the kids stay wide awake on the beach, seeing their parents return to dust like sandcastles on the beach. But in last resort, they decode the signs that Trent's friend left them, whose uncle actually runs the resort. They magically become Olympian swimmers as they escape through the coral reef that leads them back to the village as they smash the cocktails out of the new visitor's hands in order to foil this place's evil plans. See, in the comic, there was an additional character who was a sci-fi writer who pitched theories for why they might have all been trapped. And here, I'm assuming that this journal that was left behind would be 
in his place. It's where he jotted down the previous trapped guests and made the connection that all of them were sick. And it's even Trent who realizes that they were being observed the entire time from a distance as we learn that the island practically has its own Dharma initiative. Oh no. They go by Warren and Warren, who are actually trying to fix blood clots instead of causing them. They're a pharmaceutical company who's on its 73rd trial, using this beach as like a speed run for their cocktail medications that they've concocted according to each guest's health conditions. Guy had even found a pamphlet for them in the beginning that straight up said that the resort worked with them. So as an insurance risk analyst himself, he should have known better. Wow. You believe I found this online? Uh, yeah. Now, I'm not sure how they get FDA approval without disclosing the 815 patients that have come prior. Are they like Minos and scrub all of these test subjects from existence? Wouldn't it be easier to just use that McKenzie Realtor company that was mentioned in the movie, buy the land, and actually get volunteers so that you get the most bang for your buck? And while I know that the aging beach factor is the big wow, how do they make a cancer cocktail taste good? Wow. I just got chills. In the end, Knight's twist just serves to give the answers that the comic doesn't, but I still think that the thematic parts stand out way more. The idea of turning a vacation destination into the place you can't escape. In the graphic novel, there's a parable of a king who made a deal with death in order to save his soul, but in isolating himself in his castle to avoid it, he really just ended up building his own tomb. And here, you have Prisca, who works in a museum, finding herself focusing more on the past while her husband is always too worried about the future. There's all of these perceptions of time, like being a kid who wants to grow up too fast instead of enjoying the game of freeze tag that they have in the present, on kids becoming the caretakers once their parents hit a certain age and the dynamic switch, of a father who doesn't want his kids to see him be the one who cries, and a couple who realizes how minuscule their fights can be in the grand scheme of things. We never leave each other. Nothing separates us. For M. Night, it also came at a time where he was reflecting back on his parents' age. From my dad, who actually has some dementia, and he would not stop talking about Jack Nicholson, Marlon Brando, and he kept going on and on and on. I was like, Dad, I'm putting this in a movie if you keep talking about this. And then he did, and it was, for me, it represents kind of like this, this thing that someone's holding on to for their sanity. This is, this that has, everyone must know. These are the two greatest actors of all time. In fact, it was his kids who got him the graphic novel to read, which connected with him so much that he bought the rights for it, made this movie, and then had his kids working with him as the second unit director since, hey, it's completely his. It was a beautiful thing to be on one side of the beach shooting and I see down the beach, she's shooting something else. It's a, it's an amazing feeling. And, and at the end of the day, we were like, you know, work buddies. At the end of the day, we would go and have a, you know, a drink and eat something at the bar at the hotel and then fall asleep. And we would just chat about what happened. Oh, I can't believe the camera jammed on that thing. We would share stories. So whether you're someone who's stuck in the past, stuck in the present, stuck in the future one thing's for sure you can't outrun time time beat him time you know takes everybody out it's undefeated thank you all for watching this video and i'm curious to know your thoughts your theories anything else down below in the comment section i know that m knight's not a person who does a lot of sequels he just reserved that for the uh, unbreakable series but i'm curious to see what you caught that i might have missed but it's definitely one where the thematic elements are, are like the best parts of it you know it's telling you to appreciate life enjoy the now and that idea that as he states we we enjoy the sunset when we're on vacation not realizing that it's still the same sunset that we have back home and really just looking at time as being the most valuable thing which to some may mean skip in this movie. Uh, on a side note, it was interesting to see that uh, there wasn't just families behind the camera, but it was cool to see Tilda Swinton's cousin. I know her daughter's been in the souvenir, uh, and now her cousin's expanding as well. Clint Eastwood's daughter was in this, so j just looking at the families, you know, just grow and grow. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see whether M. Night's daughter is going to be doing more stuff. I know she's directed some other stuff uh, dealing with TV, um, so we'll see what the next M. Night uh, dynasty has in store. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on this movie, whether you liked it, whether you didn't, your theories what your favorite M. Night movie is, any of that stuff down below in the comment section. Until next time, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll send you a special cocktail.